Hi, we've got the 60mm roll of film that's exposed, we've read the camera sheets, we know what we're supposed to be doing with it. So the first step is to go into the dark room and make it up in total dark conditions. This film has only been exposed to light within the gate of the camera. Obviously what we have to do then is treat this in total dark conditions all the way through until it gets into the bleach in the processing machine by which time it's no longer light sensitive. So the first thing we'll do before we turn the light off, we're just going to take the tape off the cans and prepare them in light conditions. This is the magazine that all the film rolls of exposed material are going to be put into which is light type photomat magazines prior to processing. So this is what we're going to be doing in the dark now. The first thing we will do is to check that the emulsion is the correct way that it should have been in the take-up in the camera. We'll actually just apply a little bit of moisture to it because the emulsion side, which is the exposed side of the film, should be obviously uh, on one side and not the other. So in this case we're all fine. So we put the exposed material on this plate. We will join the tail of this exposed camera roll of material. Do some white spacing that we've prepared on the take-up spool of the magazine. So this is made with a specific waterproof tape, specifically made for this purpose. And we check in total dark that we've covered equally both sides of that splice join. That the join is secure and there's no perforation damage or nicks anywhere near that. So then we take up the slack and then we're going to ride through this exposed roll of film in total dark conditions, applying a very slight amount of pressure between thumb and finger to each edge of the film. And the reason for this is to check for any nick perforations, any issues that may have happened in camera, um, and to make sure that the material is going to be fit for going through the processing machine without any issues. It's rare to find anything, um, but it is a check that just has to be done because one can't allow any film with any physical damage to actually go through the processing machine. So we come to the end of that camera roll, there's no damage to perforations that were detected, luckily. Um, obviously th there's a lot of responsibility attached to any of, the, any of the jobs that affect physically handling exposed film. There's no margin for error basically, you cannot get it wrong. This is almost ready, so what we're going to do now is we can, we can assume that, I mean this was just one camera roll, but normally we'd make up up to four or five camera rolls up to about 2,000 feet, which these magazines uh, accept. And then we'll load this into the Photomec light type magazine. And there's a light trap in the bottom of this magazine that the film feeds through, obviously, which just ensures that the whole environment is light type. OK, so that's all to safety in the magazine. Put the lights on. So that rolls in the magazine, so it's ready for processing. Right, this is the load on end of the machine. This is the film is still kept in light tight conditions and it will be kept in light tight conditions until we get into the bleach. We're going to join up the first magazine of exposed camera material that we've just made up in the dark room. So there's a finite amount of time to make this change. These lights alert the operator to where the elevator in here is. They're staple joints, which have to be pretty specifically done. We'll then check the lace up in this light trap. Wind the tension back into the magazine, check the lace up is absolutely perfect. And we release this magazine. This is now feeding into this elevator. This is like a reservoir of film on an elevator. 
And while there's no film being fed in here while we're making that change, that elevator is actually rising in here to feed this machine which is running at 100 feet a minute. If the elevator gets to the top of the cabinet, you've got a problem. So we never allow that to happen. Okay, so what's happening now, the film is coming through this um, elevator and it's coming into the first solution. Now the first solution is backing removal. So film has uh, manufactured on it something called an anti-halation backing. It has to come off the film because otherwise if you process the film and that didn't come off, the film wouldn't be transparent. So the first thing that comes off is the backing in this solution here. The next thing is it will go into the actual developing solution, which is the um, Kodak patented ECN2 color neck solution. The film, is a, the film is made of silver halide crystals suspended in a gelatin emulsion with colored eyes. When it comes out the camera, it's obviously a latent image. So those silver halide crystals, as they've been exposed to light, have been excited by the light and, they, and that actually activates them. They are what actually make the image. When it comes out of there, it actually it goes into an acid stop, and the acid stop immediately stops the processing uh, procedure, the developing procedure. It's obviously crucial that the, that the film stays in the solutions for a very specific amount of time, at very specific temperatures, and at very specific rates of replenishment from our chemistry upstairs. This ensures that if we run for eight hours or 10 hours continuously, the processing solutions have exactly the same consistency and strength as they did at the beginning of the shift. And we control all of this with these chemical control units over here. It's, it's, uh, it's akin to stills photography, analog stills photography. Each solution has a very specific purpose. Right, the actual emulsions have now gone through a developing solution, they've been developed. It comes out of the acid and it goes into a bleach. It's not very much of an apparent image at this stage. This is going into the bleach. So the film is no longer sensitive to light, even though at the moment it doesn't look like traditional transparent negative. It will do when it gets into the fix. Okay, so it's come from the bleach, now into the wash, backwards and forwards, from one solution to the next. And between all the solutions, there's wiper blades, which you can see here, which take off the excess fluid from one solution to the next to minimize and stop any carryover and contamination and that'll go in. So this, this is the fix, and you'll, you'll be able to see here, you can see the film changing into, a, into an apparent image while it's in the fix, okay? So it comes in as this kind of overall orangey color into here. If you held this up to the light now, which you'll see shortly, you'll see it's actually the image that you've recorded in the camera. So you'll see shortly this will be coming out of the final rinse stabiliser through this block of wipers and into the drying cabinet. And you'll see it's an apparent image here. So this is now the fully processed neg, it just needs to be dry. Right, so the film is in this cabinet here, this, this cabinet here as you can see coming through. This cabinet is drying the film. If you over dry the film, you induce a curl in the film which means that it will not sit flat on a telecine gate or in a printing gate thereby causing potential focus issues when you're trying to transfer or scan it or print it. If you don't dry it quite correctly enough and there's moisture left in the film and it takes up on a wind, then it will adhere to itself on the wind and potentially um, damage the emulsion when you try to unwind it. So this is a mirror image of the other end. Where's the other end? The elevator rises to, to, feed, the, to feed the machine. This actually, this elevator will descend to absorb the film that's coming through. So as you can see, this elevator is falling here. So again, we have a specific amount of time 
We have a specific amount of time to make the change here, to take this camera roll off while that elevator is falling. Obviously the elevator is, cannot hit the bottom. If it gets to the bottom, you've got a major problem, the machine will stop. So the machine never stops and starts while there's film on it. And it's these elevators that work to allow that to happen both ends. So you can see this is actually, a, you will see when we stopped it, but this is actually an apparent image. It's exposed. And it looks fine, so it looks like the laser in the camera was okay. This is the end of that camera roll now coming through. So that will go into that can, which is the can that's come out of the darkroom. So we know exactly that that's, that can's followed it. When we're running all night in production, this is obviously normally the next roll of, of film. We've just processed this one roll right now. Look, this is light industrial. It probably must seem incredibly archaic and Luddite to lots of people. It's light industrial, it's manual, it's machinery, it's chains, it's rollers, it's wipers, it's chemistry. It's very physical, it's very physical, completely the opposite of the digital world. Right, I've got an egg from Nigel, and what I need to do now is I need to make it up into a roll that's usable on a tele machine. So I need to add a head and a tail leader, and I also need to punch holes for the, in the, for the edge numbers. So on the tele machine, they have a start and a finish point. Start off with a tail leader, because the negative is tail out. It's the way it comes off the machine. I'll scribe tail, put this on this centre. And wind off some tail leader. I'll cut that on the splicer. And then I'll put process negative off on the horse. This is a, is a tape splicer and it's just for making up negatives. It's not something you'd really use in when you're editing, editing anything. You have to twist the neg over. You have to obviously have to make sure you twist it around the right way. And use the tape to do the join. Turn it around. Tape the other side. Just joining leader onto the film. So this is the protection leader. So basically what I'm going to do now is I have to find the last key number. I'm going to write the end key number. Because Blue and the Telecine operator, he's going to run it from the head key number. But I'm going to punch a hole, and then he's going to finish. This is where going to be his finish point. So I need to write the key number down. So you'll be able to read it off the can, which is E078. Basically, all along the film, it's got these edge numbers, which Kodak put on, or Fuji put on when they're manufacturing the film. So when, you're, when it comes to splicing, you have these different numbers. So if you want to cut a certain scene out, you do from edge number to edge number. And when you're telecining it, the old way of telecining it, it actually reads the edge numbers. So then it get, when you're just splicing it all together, um, it makes it a lot easier to get exactly what you need. So now I'm going to run through the whole neg to the ends. So now I've got to the head, and what I have to do, I need to punch a hole for the telecine off to start. And right at the ed end here, I've got a hole complete edge number. So I'm going to write that edge number down. I'm also going to punch a hole in the dot frame. Punch a hole in the dot frame. So when the, this, this gets put on the Tully City machine, he will run this from the heads until he gets that dot, that dot in the middle of his tele, or the aperture of the Tully City machine, and you'll see it on the screen. And that's when he starts recording the edge numbers and the, and the, the action. So now I've put this. This is the head leader. So this is just to protect the, the image, the main. On. 
Now we cut that off. Just scribe head. And that's a roll made up, but you can't just leave it like that because every time you handle film, you have to clean it. So, <coughs> because I've handled it and it's head out, you've got to clean it from the tail to the head so it's ready for telly -tinny. So what I have to do <coughs> is rewind it. There's a lot more skills involved in film than the digital side of thing. I mean, if you're sh shooting on digital, you just get your SD card out and stick it in the computer and you're done. But with this, you have to make it all up, and it's, you know there is a skill involved. I do have to put it in a bag. Yeah, it just protects the negative. I mean, if the can opened up or it, someone lost the lid or something or they dropped it, at least it's going to be in a bag. So it's extra extra protection. That's it. Ready to go.